So three fifty games, seventeen years, a uh, lot of ups and downs. So what, what's the secret to footy longevity? Yeah, I've thought about this a bit over the last couple of weeks uh, and probably over the, the last few years, to be honest. I think um, there's lots of things that have allowed me to to be able to stay in the game and play for so long. But I think one of the biggest things is um, having a wonderful support network and um, there's some key pillars in that. But um, And there's probably going to be some people that I don't mention here today that have really um, helped me individually get to where I am. But... Um, the home front support pillars in, in these guys in the front row, Emma and, and the kids have, have been incredible. Um, probably more so Emma, to be honest, than, than the kids, but they're, um, <laughs> she's logistically worked out the week um, for me and, uh, and the year, but um, you know they're wonderful support. So are my family, and my mum and dad and, and siblings. Uh, and then the footy club who have, who have been amazing um, to me. You know, I, Barrack for the Cats as a kid, so I'm living out a childhood dream. Um, and I've yeah, met some incredible people um, along the way that have, that have helped me and um, I've had two great coaches. Um, Scotty's been, been wonderful, um, you know, for me in, in, uh, in t going from a, uh, a, a boy to a man. Um, he's taught me a lot of things about uh, football, but, um, you know, also life, which, is, which has been amazing as well. So... Um, lot, lots of other people from physios and you know teammates that I've had some incredible memories with. But yeah, the list goes on. But it's I think the support network is the thing that I just always come back to. What does the milestone mean to you? And I suppose how are you feeling about it this week? Uh, yeah, I can't wait. It's um, yeah, I'm obviously proud of being able to uh, get to the milestone I have. But um, I think I was taught early uh, on in my career. Um, that milestones are, are really big games for, for both the individual but for the club to celebrate. I've always loved playing in them. Um, in my first year, Darren Milburn played in his 200th game and I remember looking at the board which sat just above my locker in the old locker room and it was players that had played 200 games for the Cats and there wasn't that many on there. Uh, and um, subsequently over the last 17 years, there's been a lot added to it. But there was always such a big um, emphasis on the milestone game, so I, I can't wait. Um, I can't. I always love playing Easter Monday as well, which is quite ironic that that's where it falls. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, is it extra special that it's coming up against the Hawks? So you've had plenty of good battles with. Yeah, I think um, I think the venue is certainly iconic, and the team that we play um, is is. Um, it's certainly, uh, as you said, we've had some wonderful battles, so it's it's a nice little uh, side touch along the way. So, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. Chris, what stands out about Tom? You spent a lot of years with him, obviously. Oh, it's difficult to isolate. Um, listening to Tom just speak, then, I mean, I, I think. I'm constantly reminded how fortunate I was to end up at the Cats. Um, and I've, I think I've said to the players over the journey, we're, most of us are similar in that respect. The, the, there's the, the odd player that gets to choose via a trade or um, as a free agent to come to the Cats, but most of us were either drafted um, or um, had the club take a bit of a chance, like they did on me as a young 34-year-old. And um, I remember being... Um, a little intimidated by the quality of the squad and the, um, the senior players that the Cats had, but um, I was also so enthused by some of the younger guys coming through, and um, I guess I could kind of relate to Tom a little bit when I first got here. Um, he was clearly a highly talented player, but hadn't quite sort of cracked it for sure, and um, the 2011 grand final, about, probably about halfway through, when he really took the game by the scruff of the neck was kind of a bit of a sense for me that um, we had a lot to look forward to. It wasn't just that 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 first year, but m my hope was that um, I was always going to learn from the senior players. But um, I was was more hoping that there was a group of young players that I could come through um, and learn from. So when I when I think back, I mean, there's been so many good times um, after that. But that that was the you know the one that will probably be strongest in my memory. Um, long into the future. And you admire the way you just seem to have got better over time. He was 30, he was playing some of his best footy. 
Yeah, well, in some ways, here's a bit of a um, template for what we're trying to achieve with some of our more experienced players. There was a time, I can't remember exactly, when you're having sort of those back issues that it, Tom was struggling a little bit um, physically, but it, it also um, occurred through a period of time where I think there was a sense that the game was changing and that maybe the days of the big, strong key forward um, were numbered. Uh, it's certainly sort of the way that, you know, the, the, the greats in previous generations played, the sort of Dunstalls and, and Lockets, and maybe the game was moving further and further away from, from that style of player. Um, and while Tom was having back issues at the same time, that kind of made a bit of sense that it, the game might get harder for him, not easier. And he just completely defied those expectations. And, it, and it's not... Um, through luck and or circumstance, it's the, the adjustments that that he made in sort of the way he prepared himself, um, and, and he's he's evolved with the game. Um, and we'd like to think that we do things better now in terms of the way we manage our players, um, based off the feedback that that Tom's given us and the way that we've worked together over the years. How have you evolved your game, Tom? Obviously, the you know the role of the key forward has changed so much since you, from the start of your career to the end. Well, what changes? There's been some um, adjustments made on the way, but I, I think um, I've never lost sight of the fact that um, my strengths are my strengths and they've been able to um, keep me in the game for a long period of time. Uh, I'm, as you're pro probably well aware, I'm, I'm not very uh, fast. Um, I run last in our time trial just about every year, so... Um, I, I focus on those things that, that make me good, a good player and that's, um, that's my ability to be able to read the game and teammates and uh, you know, move my feet and, and win one-on-one -on -one contests. So uh, I think I've, uh, I've doubled down and really understood what, what uh, is, makes me a, a good player from week to week. So there's, there's been some physical changes. Um, I've adapted, I think, as all players do when they're in the game for periods of, of time, they, they adapt mentally um, where they can handle the workload a bit more. So, um, yeah, I think I think for the most part, I, I just ha ha didn't get too caught up in the fact that I, I can't do some things on the footy field um, and narrow it into to what makes me um, a good player. Where does the motivation come from to roll up again for another pre-season and another season? Well, I know I'm not going to be in the game forever uh, and I, I just I love my environment. Uh, it's what I wanted to do uh, as a kid. Uh, I uh, often would uh, tell whoever asked um, when they asked me what I wanted to do it was to play AFL football and play for the Cats. So uh, I think that that's the motivation. Um, I've loved the period of time in, in my life where I've had the kids and they've been able to uh, enjoy the journey with me. Um, so yeah, th there's there's lots of lots of factors uh, having um, having success and being in an successful organisation. So yeah, they're, they're the probably the things that that um, keep me going. How nice was it to kick four heading into the milestone week when everyone's talking about your age and how long you've been in the game and those sorts of things? Uh, it was yeah cherry on top, but it was certainly certainly nice to be able to go over. Uh, and win in Adelaide early on in the year. Uh, and probably, I thought we played really well against the Saints, but um, we maybe missed some opportunities and didn't capitalise as well as we could. I thought we played a, a more consistent game against uh, Adelaide. So so that was really nice uh, to be 2-0 uh, and O's, um, is, is a good start um, with lots of, lots of improvement in football in front of this group. Uh, yeah, much to the disgust of um, my grandfather and grandmother, um, I think it's something that I've I've learnt again off off people in this environment, former teammates that played um, played a selfless um, style of football. Um, I think ultimately it comes back to um, you know how I started footy and sort of the lessons I've learnt from 
from my parents over the years. It's, um, you know, they're very selfless people and, um, you know, I've always, I think I've always just believed in if there's people in better, op better spots than you, um, they, you know, they deserve the ball. So, um, I, yeah, I, I get just as much enjoyment out of, of other people kicking goals as, as, um, as, as I do from myself um, hitting the score sheet. So, um, yeah, long way, hopefully that continue. Is there a moment that stands out across your 349 games? Um, probably not. There's, there's moments um, being involved in grand finals. Um, there's been some challenges along the way that have, that have been significant. That have that have helped me uh, develop as a person, uh, which is, uh, which again has been, uh, I'd I'd like them back in in certain instances. Uh, but I've learned a lot about myself and and uh, and developed um, as well. So yeah, it, it would probably have to be be those premierships that were that I was in, and we were involved in. Uh, even the first one at, at VFL level in 2007 when I wasn't a part of the AFL team, it was, um, yeah, that, that was incredible, my first experience on, on grand final day. And I think they're, they're some pretty key uh, moments. What are some of those big challenges? Chris mentioned the, the back injuries. Yep. Is that, that among? Yeah, there was, there was that. Um, there was also form in 2011. Uh, there was a period where... I think any young player, when they're trying to establish themselves and, and couldn't quite find the the, uh, the the recipe, I suppose, for, for being in and staying consistent, that was a real challenge um, to work through. Obviously, losing my mum in 2016 was, was the toughest um, part of, of my career. Um, again, you know, I talk about that support network, but that support network at, at that period of time in my life was um, was invaluable, um, both from a, a work point of view, but also a home point of view too. So there, there have been some challenging, um, some challenging periods uh, that uh, that I've yeah had to work through that have uh, given me a, a little bit of uh, loss of sleep. Obviously, a disappointing year for the the club last year, missing finals doesn't really happen too often down here. What do you think the the club's going to show this year? I'm always optimistic about uh, our um, our opportunity that's in front of us, and I will be again this year. Uh, I I think we've we've managed to uh, revitalise the group a little bit um, after what was a, a really challenging year. I think it's uh, off the coming off the back of a, a grand final victory. The best side in the reigning premier always gets challenged every week, and everyone's always up for the fight so it it, uh, it can be quite taxing um, going into that following year uh, we, we had some things that went against us both health uh, and form at certain stages um, so th th that was a bit disappointing but yeah I, I'm really optimistic in, in what this group can achieve I think we've got we've got great depth uh, we've got some some players playing at uh, VFL level that are are really exciting and are going to get the opportunity to play this year, I dare say. Uh, and, and the Geelong supporters are going, to, are going to be pretty excited and rightly so. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm just looking forward to yeah what's in front and, and what we can do. How much do you think you have left in the tank do you think you can play beyond this season? Uh, I I get the interest. Um, in, in my future, I'm a 35 turning 36 year old. Uh, I, I think what's worked really well for me over the last few years is uh, my ability to be able to enjoy myself, knowing that the the end is 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 uh, is certainly closer than than the start. So I'll continue to uh, enjoy myself in here, uh, enjoy the opportunity that that I have. Uh, and then at some stage we'll we'll um, sit down and, and make that decision, but it's certainly not on on my radar at the moment. Joel's games record is inside. I think only a few games away. Is that something you're thinking about the potential of passing Joel there? To be honest, not really. I, I touched on before about milestones and and how fun they are to be a part of. Uh, last week, Tom Stewart. Uh, what a what a wonderful story that is. 
uh, I love um, seeing players be celebrated by um, by the club, um, but also to be able to celebrate with their family, uh, I think is a wonderful touch. And you know, to be able to run out with the kids, it's it's something. This milestone in particular has, has been on the radar um, for for a while, and and one that you know I'm looking forward to. Uh, but uh, if and in when that happens, um, that that'll be great. But I think this is the one that that I've uh, looked forward to the most. Chris Patrick Dansfield went down late in the Crows game. Do you have an update on on his hamstring? No, but the club will be in a position to put out the usual uh, update later on this week. Chris, what um, impact has Tom had on the playing group over the last decade or so? Gee, it's hard to explain. I think the combination of um, Tom and Joel uh, is, it, it tends to be the way I think about it, and maybe it's unfair to talk about Joel now, it's sort of Hawks Day, but I've always thought of them as a, as a duo. They've always been close friends, came through at the same time, completely different players, um, but, um, you know, we're really able to galvanise the group sort of on and off the field. Um, I mean, I think he's been one of the great players in his position um, of a generation. Uh, and it's just, we're just so fortunate that, I mean, I almost jumped in before when he talked about the future. I, I think that one of the things he's done so well is just like, look after the next game and the next moment. And, and when you do that well, that tends to look after the, the future. So he's clearly not contracted for another four or five years, but, um, you know, I'm not looking forward to the day that he says he's had enough. We're trying to keep an open mind to um, him playing, not just because of his influence on field, which is still obvious, even in the last game, um, but the influence that he has sort of off the field and um, the way we want to go about things as a club. We, we constantly have conversations around evolution and, and how you shouldn't get hung up in what your culture is um, because pretty quickly, if you do that, you get stuck in the past. You know, things are always changing and they're dependent on, the, or the way in which you do things are dependent on the people that you have in the organisation um, at the time. Um, but when we, when we lose people like Joel and, and Tom, um, you want to retain as much as possible um, you know, the, the, the ways in which they sort of um, made us who we are. Um, so... Uh, maybe I'll learn a little bit of a sort of lesson when, when, when Joel did finish because uh, you sort of think, oh, I just, just want a little bit more. Just, just give us a little bit more before you go. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to confine it to just um, this last year, but what I am going to commit to is just enjoying um, every moment because it's been a, a, a real privilege. And, again, it's easy to get hung up on the on-field um, uh, accolades um, and sort of miss the impact that, that he's had around the place. Early days, Tom, but is there any father-daughter, father-son potential there? Do they show much interest in Dad's games <laughs> at the moment? Um, uh, they show more interest than, uh, than they look at the moment. <laughs> uh, pretty laid back um, in the front row. They sort of look like Mark Blitzarves in, in a team meeting. No, they're Or away. Jeremy Cameron. <laughs> they're all um, <laughs> Look, they... Um, that they have grown up around the footy club, so I, I think that they they love the environment. They love, you know, the people. Even just being out there kicking the ball in the warm up area, uh, everyone came up and said g'day, or mo most did for for the most part. So uh, I think they love uh, they love being around, whether or not <laughs> they play when they're old. That's completely up to them. But um, yeah, we'll see. You mentioned Jezza there. Has the partnership been? With him over the past what, five or so years. Yeah, he's he's one of those players that's taught me uh, again. Probably without him knowing, he's taught me uh, a, a lot uh, in just in in the way that he plays and the way that he thinks and the way that he approaches the game. So uh, I have have loved uh, playing alongside Jez. I've also loved playing alongside the six or seven others that that I get to play with each week. I think. That that's evidenced by, if you watch us closely enough, how how much we enjoy each other's successes that we have. It's it's a, certainly a collective, that's that's shared amongst the forward line. But um, that's the same that can be said uh, down the other end of the ground. So, wonderful player, uh, wonderful person, and, and I've in, enjoyed uh, the journey with him 